Welcome ladies and gentlemen, on the series strategy game and we are going to take a look at a new game today. It is going to be the Great War Western Front. We're going to make a let's play out of that and see how things go. We're of course going to play the campaign and that means that is going to spend multiple episodes. Uh, I do want to play the Allied Nations because A, I've seen a couple of other YouTubers play the Central Powers and B, I do think they are a little bit more interesting because the Allied units vary a little bit more. Each nation gets their own bonuses. That's kind of a little bit more interesting than the Germans, who are just the Germans. You don't have the Austro-Hungarians in the game, at least for now. So, we're going to start normal difficulty here. You can see I've played and dabbled a little bit, just to get the hang of it. But, yeah, I do really like the game so far. There are a couple of things that I dislike a little bit, and not sure whether the pacing is going to be great. Uh, but, I simply enjoy it. So here we go. And I'm going to weave my uh, little review here into that. And you can tell for yourself. I'm going to cut the uh, intro here because I don't really like it. Right. So we've got two things here. We've got the campaign map and then we've got the actual battles that we can actually take control. And that's going to be a little more, bit more like an RPG. This is, of course, a hex based map. We've got the German capital or headquartered Kreuznach. We've got the French headquartered Paris, and we've got the British coming in here in Calais over the English Channel, and the whole front line in between. It is December 1941, and that means... 1914, rather. Uh, and that means that the front, li front lines have settled a little bit, but we are not yet in full uh, trench warfare. And what I really like about the game is that it sort of shows that progress progression from battle to battle as things are permanent. So when you put down a trench in a battle, it will be there in the next battle over that same region uh, from the same front line. So that's kind of cool, I think, and that shows how things do progress. And for now, it is a little bit more maneuver warfare. And I do want to take a look here at where we can fight some battles. I would like to fight a battle from Verdun, but I have noticed that Verdun is heavily fortified. That might not be fully representative of the early war. We could also think about attacking into Mohan. There are a couple of things about the UI that I should probably explain. And we've got these little tokens here. You can see we've got two cores down here. The Germans have one in Colmar, which is actually a nice attack pattern that we could use. They've got three in Sarabourg. And the more you have, of course, the better, although you are limited by the amount of troops that you can bring into a battle. We're also thinking about supply right now. In the beginning of the war, most Attention. of the supply is sort of inherently carried by the units, uh, 180 each. So that is kind of useful. Ah, come on. Sometimes the UI is a little bit weird. Um, so, for example, attacking to Sarabok is probably not going to be the best idea yet. Uh, but attacking to Colmar might actually be a good idea. We've got two cores, they've got a single one. So, honestly, I think that's something that we're going to do. Right, so let's send these two French cores of 20 infantry, one heavy artillery and one light artillery each into Colmar. We're going to get into our first battle to see how things go. Oh, before I do that, I should at least unlock one thing that I like to do. We've got three research points. Uh, we can spend them on multiple things. I like to get the improved helmets. That increases the standard infantry soldier health by 25%. Of course, that means A, it's going to be a little bit more likely to win battles. Not as much as you would think, because sometimes when you do get caught in the open, you're just going to melt away, and whether you're melting away 25% faster doesn't really matter that much, but I still think it's, it's a useful thing to have. Could go for the heavy artillery. I don't think we're going to do that quite yet, so yeah. We're going to take attack from Epinal into Colmar. You can see these little stars here, I'm going to explain what they do in a moment. They've got one core, we've got two, so we should be having more supplies than they have, and we should have more forces available to us overall, although again, sometimes you're capped at that. There's a little bit of a mini-map over here, you can see sort of the no man's land in between, a couple of uh, patches of forest and two craters, not sure what they should represent at this uh, time in the war, but um, they're there. Right, this is the pre-battle phase uh, in which we point, uh, put down our units. You can see the German headquarter over here and a couple of interesting points that, if we can take them, are going to give us a lot of points. Same for them. 
and it's a pretty pristine area for now. There are not a lot of trenches that are put down. You can see some trenches that the game has uh, put into here for us. We can still remove these because this is the first battle where that happens. Uh, but as time goes on, that's not going to be possible anymore. Now, of course, they can attack. I don't think they are going to. So I'm not going to be too concerned about placing down our trenches right now. Uh, what I'm mostly concerned about is placing down artillery. And we're going to place down, I guess, two light artillery. I think are going to be a good idea. The difference between light and heavy artillery is heavy artillery does more damage. Uh, whereas light artillery does pre predominantly suppress the enemy. So that I think should be okay. It is going to cost us a little bit. But it's not too bad. Trenches are not that expensive either. So I think having some level of protection here might not be the worst idea ever. C is pretty well protected. I don't think I like how little protection A has. Um, the trouble is that there is this little forest up here. And once troops get out of the forest, uh, basically you can't fire that at them while they're in the forest. They're basically not visible. So it's a very short line here. Very short firing position. I don't think I like this trench, but it should be okay. I don't expect them to put up too much resistance here. Right, with that, uh, we're going to place down infantry. We've only got the standard the infantry. We can buy it through in the battle itself, uh, but it is going to be more expensive, so uh, we might as well do that now, right? So let's place some on the, uh, on the flanks here uh, to protect that area. Uh, these trenches, as you can see, hold uh, enough space for two core uh, no these are not course these are companies um but it's uh, only one that can fire at any given time so placing two is is really a little bit pointless um except for melee combat so once the enemy does enter your system as well um awesome stuff right so can place down nine more okay let's Place them. We can only place them in trenches, so I'm not going to place them in the open because I can't. Right. That does leave us with a, with a lot of supply, and we do need some supply to fire the artillery, but there's always going to be some in reserve, so I think 25% or so we're only going to get at the start of the battle. With that being said, let's begin the battle and see what we can do over here. So, this is now the actual start of the battle, and we can see what's going on. We have, of course, limited vision here, and I'm immediately going to send forward one of our troops here into these forests, simply so that we have better vision there. I don't think we strictly need it. They would be really, really foolish to uh, attack at this moment. Right, and let's look at their position. So, they have got a trench position over here around Z. Nothing too fancy. What I dislike is that little trench here in the front, a couple of them in the back, very parallel arrangement here, two lines of trenches in front of X, and then Y is a bit more complicated too. Right, we can sort of start everywhere, but since our left is a little bit better defended um, and the right really isn't, I think uh, we're going to bring over our troops to the right and then have them ready there and if they're going to do something funny on the right, uh, left they're basically going to run into us right bring troops over there that should be okay right you guys can get into the forest which is also going to be a nice jumping off point i think Bring forward all of our troops. We don't need to be that concentrated, but I do like to reinforce whenever we can. Uh, another thing I do like to do is give quick commands here to our uh, to our artillery. Now we're going to do our first trench assault here in a second. Can't see that the Germans would be attacking for now. I think having three companies. Uh, six companies should be more than enough for the first attack, but let's see. Right, so we are in the forest down here. If we're going to get any closer, we could probably spot the Germans in their trenches. We can't see that for now. 
So, I'm going to pause here for a second, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a suppression barrage. So, the way light artillery works is that everything that's sort of in this circle is going to be suppressed. So, they can't fire uh, for, a sort of, uh, for a short amount of time. It's not going to do a lot of damage. This is light artillery. The point of light artillery is not to do a lot of damage, but it can certainly do suppression. And that's important because we basically want to get our troops into their trenches and uh, they shouldn't really die doing that. Right, good. Let's see whether that will work. So our troops are going to come out of the trenches right at, as the artillery bombardment begins and you can see there are some troops in there and you can see by the little symbol that there, symbol there that they can't fire. Now, I believe these are German conscripts, so sort of light troops. Which is actually great because that means this is going to be a bit of a pushover as our regular troops are going to come in. Right, we have made it into their trenches. They are still being suppressed. That's good. They're not suppressed anymore, but you can see that especially the conscripts here are melting away pretty fast under our concentrated attack. So that's good. We have of course used up some supplies in these artillery bombardments, but all in all that seems to be fine. Troops engaged in melee can't actually do, uh, can't actually fire on other units, so it's going to be all right. We're going to move up further troops here. I think soon we're going to see that we're going to start to capture that X zone. We're going to try to do something similar with Y, uh, but I do need to be mindful about what I can and cannot cover with our artillery. Okay, seems like that will work. It's going to be a bit tough. These these front lines are very far away from one another. We can place one there and one here, but I don't think we can suppress everything at the same time. Hmm, that's not great. And they might have machine guns and stuff there too. So that's not great. But let's move up anyway into this little forest here. And grab more troops that we can send off into that forest. I've got more reserves over here. They do only have conscripts, which I really like. But yeah, this is going to be difficult. We are capturing X, that will mean we're going to get that resupply point. It's not going to give us more supply, it just means that we can bring in troops from different directions. I would very much like to come around their site. And I'm guessing that, you know what, we're going to try that. We're going to bring up one of our troops here. Bring them towards the rear there. And then they might be able to attack there. We just need to be mindful that we're in between these two trench lines. But it looks like we're safe from sort of enemy fire over there. So that's good. Yeah, bring it, bring up more troops then. Speaking of more troops, um, you guys should likewise come over here, I guess. Yeah, and we can see that they have some machine guns. Machine guns have a limited arc of fire, and these ones do capture, do cover each other pretty well. So frontal assault in that direction, I would really not want to do. So I think what we're going to do is indeed going to try to come in from the back there. And we don't need to be too concerned about that, and we can probably still use our artillery. That does mean, though, that we are going to send all of our troops here. Towards sort of in that direction. Just come over here. We'll probably need at least four companies. Do almost feel bad about beating these German conscripts. But yeah, you can sort of still see how this is still maneuverable. Um, as the game progresses, uh, there are going to be a lot more trenches and, and trench warfare is going to be much more of a thing. Um, and, I, and I like that progression. It, it feels like the game is really doing something there. So yeah, I like it. Uh, that's probably a little bit too close to these trenches. So let's keep our distance here. Yeah, you can see there is some, some sporadic fire coming in from the trenches. It's not too concerning for now, but I'd rather not be subject to that too much. Likewise, we need to be a little bit careful here on that side too. 
On a de nouveaux ordres. Le commandement veut Attendez cette position. Le commandement veut cette position. On a de nouveaux ordres. On tient. So thread that needle. On a de nouveaux ordres. On tient. It's a bit uh, risky to have that many troops in one place in case there is artillery, uh, but I don't think the enemy has artillery, otherwise we would have seen it by now. Right, speaking of, let's place down our artillery and get ready here. So you can see this one cannot actually farm that rear trench, so it might need to do something over here. Which one was that? So number one, can't fire on there, that's okay. We're going to place that down here. And number two, can you fire up there? Yeah, you can. You're gonna be firing on here. As you're doing that, these two groups are gonna run into that trench. Whereas these two groups are gonna come into that trench. They might at the end of that run be fired upon by that machine gun. Yeah, and our supply situation isn't looking great. But we do need to do what we need to do. I don't see any Germans for now, but they should be in there. Yeah, you can see some conscripts there. And I think we started that slightly early. They're going to wake up very soon. Yeah, now they are. That machine gun is firing, as are all of these conscripts. But they are only conscripts, so that is... That is the one good thing here. Surprisingly enough, there aren't any Germans in the back line, uh, so we're going to spread out a little bit. Sometimes the Germans do, or the AI does funny things and, and sort of come out of the air trenches, even though they really shouldn't. Well, let's try to pull back our weaker units, and normally they should be... Oh, we are throwing some grenades there, that's, that's good. Uh, and normally they should be running through the trenches, so that's, that's usually... Yeah, the AI is usually good at that sort of thing. But sometimes it bugs out. But here, things are going sort of as I would um, expect them to do. Come on, guys. You get in that trench, and more importantly, you should be joining that melee. Good. Pull back the weaker unit. They can probably deal with that machine gun by throwing some grenades. Bring the stronger units to the front there, and that's going to be alright. Right. In the meanwhile, we're going to start our assault here on these command trenches. Luckily enough, I think we can cover basically all of this by the same group. Attention! On tient! Mettez-vous en position! Attendez les ordres! Tenez-vous prêts! No, wait a minute. Attention. I think we should do that differently. Right, so... <coughs> you go here. You go here. You go there. And you go there. We've got more troops here. We can bring them to these starting points. We've got these two troops. They shouldn't come out yet because we've got still got to do with that machine gun. Okay, good fire there. With only one artillery salvo, that's also nice. It does mean that these guys up there in the back are going to probably be able to fire upon us, but only for a short while there, because the angle is sort of a little bit awkward for them. Um, and if they start to do some serious damage, we can still re-engage with our artillery. And that timing was a lot better than the other one. Yeah, these guys are not going to start to fire upon us, but it is going to be alright. These conscripts have moved up. We have dealt with that artillery piece there. Or machine gun piece. So that's nice. Some wounded troops down there. Lots more melee up here. That's alright. Let's bring these two guys forward and into the command trench. We're going to try to capture that. And that is going to give us a lot of points. Which of course is going to be useful to win the game. Right. And I guess we can actually bring forward more reinforcements here. What we can do is pull back some of our units, have them withdraw, that is going to refund A, some points, um, and B, it means we can call in more reinforcements, and especially on these super weak units, I think that is usually a good idea. But maybe we can even deal without that. There are usually some troops in these command trenches, it's to be expected. They're not going to come in from Zap here, so that's alright-ish. 
Right. Uh, we have beaten them. They're usually a bit tougher to beat, but uh, in this case, I guess they were simply um, the relatively light troops. Right. Okay. You guys are beaten up a little bit. Let's pull you back. I've only got this single group here that's full strength. Bring some some reinforcements here. I'm guessing you guys can come up over here. Reinforce us. I'm gonna keep a single line here. Ooh, there are some more reinforcements here. Yeah, you guys should be coming up. Um, and you should actually do that in column formation because that's a little bit faster to move. Doesn't make that much of a difference, uh, and they are becoming more susceptible to damage there, uh, but still. Right, you guys, um, let's move you up over here so that I can send you home if I need to do that. But I do think these troops are going to be potentially enough to beat them. I don't want to use more of our material here than we really need to. And I'm guessing this is going to be actually be pretty fine, actually. Oh, uh, notice that we have got this little forest here. Yeah, you know what? I think what we're going to do is we're going to send... Some of our troops are in that forest so that they can immediately sort of jump on top of them. And they might actually go into here too. Yeah, I like that idea. Right, let's bring all of you over there. You guys can stay here. We've captured the command trench, that's nice. All the beaten up units can gather up over here. See whether we can use as reinforcements. Yeah, and you can see the column informations here are pretty fast. So that's nice to see. Right, let's see how far we can get into the forest without them spotting us. Seems re looks relatively light, but um, not sure whether that's actually the truth. And one of the things that I really would like to do is being able to sort of chain commands and, and whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, you can see some shots emancipating from over there. So we're going to start by laying some fire on this piece of the trench. We're going to have you guys run into that far trench. You guys are going to come into that near trench. It's probably not wise because these this machine gun can cover that. But that's alright. Okay, and then we're going to get the second artillery ready because this line of trenches here is also going to be able to shoot at us. But just a little later, so I think it's going to be alright to do it like that. Right. Even the light machine gun there is suppressed, so that's great. We are on the trenches now. And this is just this is just this looks way too easy because uh, mostly because we're just facing a conscript uh, force over here. And this is early in the war. I've got a little bit of experience at that point uh, dealing with this sort of thing. But it is gonna progressively get a lot more difficult. Well, we have overwhelmed them there, let's move up. Just two more calls there, uh, companies there. Move you up, get into proper formation here. And who are our strongest guys? You probably are. Sometimes a bit funny to see them sort of passing each other, but. The game sort of doesn't recognize that that should be a fight. Fights can technically only happen in the trenches themselves. Oh, notice that they have, for a brief time there, actually uh, moved out of the trench, uh, which is always funny to see. Right, move you guys over there. Move you guys up too. We are seeing some Germans down here, and I think they might be a problem. So I'm actually probably gonna start to suppress them. You guys can just sort of walk over here. We need to be in the trenches or anything. Yeah, but we can't capture supply point Z until we get rid of these guys. So there we go. You're know, starting to fire now. I don't like that. We could, of course, just come out of these trenches into them. And that would have been relatively easy. Because it's a short distance. But even that would have required us to probably use artillery. Or at least, you know, preserve the lives of our men. And that's all right. By the way, since light artillery does so little damage, I don't really mind if it's still landing on top of us as we're entering the trenches. But yeah. 
There we go, beating these guys. That now gives us uh, time to capture that supply point. We didn't need to send anyone home. Uh, we didn't need to call in too many reinforcements, I believe. So that is the first battle over here. For now, a pretty disjointed affair and not too much of the sort of industrial scale warfare, even though, of course, we have used a lot of supply here uh, for our artillery. But on the other hand, we have not used any heavy artillery. We haven't used any other shenanigans. This is sort of the plain vanilla battlefield as it gets. But I can already tell you, uh, I think for the next episode, we're going to have one that is going to be a lot tougher. But first, let's see the results of the battle here. And I should warn you, my PC is doing something funny. And I need to see whether that actually happens in the video because this is going to flicker in a moment. So if you've got any problem with epilepsy, epilepsy uh, look away for a second here. No, this time it doesn't do that. For whatever reason. Anyway, so... We are scoring a great victory with a score of nearly 5,000 against the 1,000. They have killed, so that's what that means, allied casualties, uh, nearly 2,000 of our men. We've killed 3,000 of theirs. They are conscripts. Ours are heavy industry. That's not great because we are still needing to pay nearly as much money as they do. But on the other hand, um, because we've been fairly efficient here, we are actually earning some money. We are getting a command model here. We are earning some supplies, so that's all very nice and lovely to see. And I think we should actually have more money than we had at the start of the game. Where's the video here? Because there came the flicker uh, on that little last screen there. Nevertheless, uh, I think a good first lesson in how you can deal with some of these trenches and, and a fairly successful battle. You can see that it did change the star point here. And we are getting some bonuses here because we are beating a lot of the enemies. And yeah, we are having more money than we start with, started with. So... You can see that the battle did change the command structure of Colmar and has now only one out of two stars. And once we have two of these stars ready, we can basically get um, the area. So I think one of the things that we might want to do is start another attack here from Lunaville into Colmar to finish them off. They should also have a regional morale modifier. And since we especially know that these are only light troops, I think that is something that we're going to do. And um, that is, I think, going to happen in the next battle. So, yeah, I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the strategic situation here a little bit, think about our reinforcements, think a little bit about our lead infantry, what the Belgians, the Canadians, and all of these guys are going to do, and uh, also what else we might want to research. But I hope to see you around next time for the second Battle of Colmar. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Do leave a like and everything, and I hope to see you around next time. Bye-bye.